word defibrillator for today where we kickstart your day with a word from within the word. So what is God trying to tell us? We finished off with uh, James. We're going through James, James 3.13. Who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Then let him by his noble living show forth his good works with the unobtrusive humility, which is pro- the proper attribute of true wisdom. So true wisdom is to do things, noble good works, and that's all we spoke about is the good works of the last couple of chapters, uh, not chapters, verses in James. Now it comes, remember that word but, that when we get to the word but, everything that we've just spoken about is possibly conditioned on what's going to happen, or it's just changed it completely. Here we go. James 3, 14. But, so you do all this stuff, you show good works, you're noble, you're doing it by action, and that's a way of demonstrating your faith in God. But, if you have bitter jealousy, envy, and contention, rivalry, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not pride yourselves on it. And thus be in defiance of and false to the truth, oh my word. So now all of a sudden, if you're doing these good works to demonstrate your faith in God, if we're doing this and there is bitter jealousy, contention, selfish ambition in your heart, don't pride yourself on those good works because it's going to be just false to the truth. This is superficial wisdom. This superficial wisdom in verse 15 is not such as comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, animal, even devilish, demonical. For wherever there is jealousy, envy and contention, rivalry and selfish ambition, there will also be confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion and all sorts of evil and vile practices. This is one of the things that I continually try and get people to understand, is the Word of God is supposed to not cause unrest. It's not supposed to cause disharmony. It's not supposed to call rebellion. In fact, if you are preaching the Word of God correctly, it will have completely opposite attributes. So when we have a scripture like we say, wives submit to your husbands, they go, are you crazy? And there's a lot of contention that goes in that and comes out of that preaching of the word, there's no peace. Well, it's because it's being preached incorrectly because that's not supposed to be the outcome when we are speaking the word of God. Because in verse 17, we go back to another but. So if you're going to do this with, uh, and you're going to prove your faith by what you do in your obedience, your works of obedience, but if there's envy and jealousy, this is not going to be good and it's going to be false to the truth, it's superficial, and wherever there's jealousy and contention, there's going to be all sorts of evil and vile practices, and then, but, we go now back again, and this is what happens when it is true. It's the opposite. In verse 17, but the wisdom from above is first all uh, are first of all pure, undefiled. How nice is that? But the wisdom f- from above, where you and I are going, okay, Lord, what is it that you have us say? Putting our agenda aside. And that makes it pure, undefiled. Then it is peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle. It is willing to yield to reason, full of compassion, And good fruits, it is wholehearted and straightforward, impartial and unfeigned, free from doubts, wavering and insincerity. So now when we are preaching the word, when we are sharing the word, it's got to come across in love. It's got to be courteous. How many times have I heard a word from somebody and it's absolutely rude? Their whole attitude towards the people is I'm the one with the power for the hour. If you don't listen to me, you're an idiot. And if it is courteous, considerate, and gentle, look what happens within the people when they hear. They yield to reason. There's compassion. 
there is good fruit. So when we are preaching the word correctly, the fruits of the people who hear the word will be good fruits. Verse 18, and the harvest of righteousness, of conformity to God's will in thought and deed, is the fruit of seed sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves and in others. That peace, which means concord, agreement, and harmony between individuals, with undisturbedness in a peaceful mind, free from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. Oh, my word. No, 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 not my word, but the Father's word. Word from the kingdom of heaven. Look at the harvest. When we are taking wisdom from above, it will be pure, undefiled. Then it is peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle. It is willing to yield to reason, full of compassion and good fruits. It is wholehearted and straightforward, impartial and unfeigned, free from doubts, wavering and insincerity. That's how the word of God needs to be imparted. And indeed too. And the harvest, what we reap from sharing and participating in that kind of word. James 3 verse 18. And the harvest of righteousness, of conformity to God's will, in thought and deed. That's what righteousness means. It's the fruit of the seed sown in peace. So we sow the seed in peace by those of us who work for and make peace very clever here, in themselves and in others. If we are not in peace with ourselves, with our relationship with the Father, how do we bring peace into others? That peace will be in concord, in agreement and harmony between the individuals, with undisturbedness. Can you feel that undisturbedness? In a peace, peaceful mind, free from fears, agitations, passions, and moral conflicts. Dear Lord, if there's anything that I can pray for us this morning, it is to have undisturbedness, a peaceful mind, free from fears and agitations, passions, and moral conflicts. Father, I thank you for a harvest of righteousness in our life in conformity to your will, in our every thought and in our every deed. We thank you, Father, for your word that comes from above, which is pure, undefiled. It is peace-loving, courteous, considerate, and gentle. Father, may we yield to its reason. May it be full of compassion and, Father, full of good fruits. Father, that we are free from doubts, wavering, and insecurity. Father, I pray for that peace that surpasses all understanding to God our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.